What is the tangible impact of getting rid of the 2002 AUMF? Frankly speaking, it won't have an impact on our current operations in the Middle East. Uh, the 2002 AUMF that underpinned our second war in Iraq, uh, the 1991 AUMF, which was for the first Gulf War, that is also still on the books, uh, in addition to a 1957 <laughs> AUMF under the Eisenhower administration. I read about the 1957 one just yesterday, and I my my brain hurt. I wanted to put my head through a wall when I read that that was still in effect. <laughs> no, but the, the challenge is you you have these authorizations that are sitting out there waiting for a current or future president to creatively interpret them and then do an end run around any congressional constraints uh, in the short term. So the goal here is that Congress was imbued by the founders with these Article One responsibilities to declare war, you know, to, to raise an army, to you know, have the power of the purse. Um, the executive, the the chief executive, our president under Article Two, um, they're commander in chief, but they're still responsive to Congress to issue that authorization. And now we haven't declared war since you know the forties, but we have obviously engaged in numerous conflicts that have been authorized through these authorizations to the use of military force. Um, you know, the, the biggest one, obviously, that we need to look at is the post-9-11 AUMF uh, that has underpinned not just our war in Afghanistan, but operations in close to 20 other countries, uh, extended far beyond al-Qaeda and associates to groups that have been actively fighting al-Qaeda, uh, to groups that didn't exist on 9-11. You know, so that has been stretched beyond mere any recognition. Um, but first and foremost, we need to clean the slate of all of these defunct authorizations so that we can focus on having a thoughtful, strategic replacement to the post-9-11 AUMF while looking at war powers more broadly in the next breath, because that's where we need to make sure that any future authorization is time-bound, is geographically bound, and also has a much more firm mission set. Uh, so again, it's not just a blank check that Congress is writing. Uh, and, and members of Congress don't have to make, cast that decisive vote on whether or not to send you know, men and women into harm's way. 